What has happened to Budget Builders and welcome back to the GMC Motorhome Rescue. This is a 1973 GMC Motorhome that we rescued from an abandoned piece of property. This thing had been sitting for years. We were able to get it running. We got it driving, we got it back here, and we started cleaning it up. We bought a new total camper and we have been gutting it putting all those new parts on this thing. We've cleaned it up. We redid all the windows in our laps episode. And with the thing sealed from the outside, in today's video, we're gonna start working on the inside. We'll start getting all the wiring in, start working on the ceiling. So we can start putting this interior back in. Now we've got some bits pulled out, but obviously before we can start going back in, we got to finish pulling the rest of everything out of here. We have decided to go ahead and keep this bathroom in here. It's specifically designed to go in this coach. It fits super nicely. It's actually in really good shape other than pretty gross, but we will clean that up. Well, we do want to redo the cabinetry on the outside. So we want to go to pull all that off. We're going to pull all this plumbing. I don't think it's uh <laughs> I don't think it's going to be any good anymore. And obviously we're going to put some pecs and stuff in there, go more modern, more updated, not have to worry about this copper, but we're going to end up pulling all of the wiring out because we're going to use all of the new out of the new camper just to update everything, make it all safe and reliable. And we'll also go ahead, get that tank pulled out of there. We are going to keep propane in this thing. I know I had mentioned just getting rid of that completely. A lot of you commented, Hey, a lot of the stuff you're going to be using is going to be needs propane needs lp and it's it's really easy to use it's efficient and there's a reason they still have it in camper so we're going to go be we're going to keep lp in this but we will design it a little bit differently put two tanks instead of the one more modern style that we can uh update be able to use without issue one huge thing is the foam on the ceiling and on the walls is in excellent condition you know that's one thing we're kind of concerned about with mice and stuff um that stuff's probably got some stuff in it that's pretty bad for you i assume if the mice didn't even want to dig in it <laughs> but it all looks really good we might touch up a few areas maybe some of the exposed stuff to help with condensation maybe help with the r rating a little bit here in the camper as far as efficiency for heating and cooling but it looks really good we just need to get all the wiring in place so we can start putting some new panels up but first let's start stripping this thing out date on this 1973. <laughs> to do because there's there's no going back now.
think we were kind of dreading that a little bit, but it's kind of the way we got to go to be able to get this thing knocked out. Everything just basically needs to come out of here, obviously, other than the bathroom here, but everything's cleaned out on the backside. Went ahead and decided just to take the time, clean out some of our wire channels that we know we're going to have to get cleaned out, blow all of the dust, all of the crud out of this thing. We'd be fighting that the entire time, so we went ahead and just blew everything out, swept everything out. It smells... It doesn't smell like anything now. It doesn't have any kind of smell, which is a good thing. As we start putting fresh stuff in here, it's going to give it that fresh new motorhome smell. But uh, the kind of old, musky, stinky smell is out of here. A lot of it was obviously the boards on the ceiling, on the walls, and the insulation up on the front and rear. I don't know. We've got a blank canvas now. Let's go ahead. Uh, I think it's time we need to do a couple things on the floor, clean that up, address it. We start putting all the new wiring in place, figuring out where everything needs to go. Probably gonna make a mess, but gonna try to just pull it off. Cause this old tent is awful. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be a nightmare. See how much glue we've got to clean off. <laughs> From the factory with the generator, for some reason they took this section out here. Obviously the generator had been stolen from this one, so we're not sure what was going on there. But we're gonna be doing this compartment a little bit different. So we're gonna be adding a piece of angle in right there, so we can go ahead and put a floor back in. All of the flooring is done and we are ready for the wiring. But before we do the wiring, I think it's time we go ahead and do something here with the floor because some of the wiring is gonna be attached underneath the bed and stuff and we wanna be able to just have it finished instead of having to try to pull stuff up and move everything around. Now we had thought about maybe even doing like shag or something in here and there was a lot of comments. You really don't even want carpet in a camper, at least this part of the camper. The upper front up there, I do wanna do carpet. I wanna have that, uh, RV motorhome feel to it, but back here we're trying to make it comfortable, easy to clean up with the kids and everything. So we are going to do a linoleum. We got it loaded in the kind of messy suburban here, but this is what we ended up going with. It's a really light colored wood. It's a very thick, so it's a floating style linoleum, and that'll be nice for us to be able to lay it down, glue, and staple the edges where we need to, and then the rest of it's just going to kind of float in there. And I think it'll be a nice look. It's not going to be too overpowering, but it'll allow us to really do some neat stuff in the camper without clashing with the flooring. Now we're obviously not motorhome restorers. We're not house restorers. This is, we've done linoleum in the past. Um, not much though, and not this kind. So I'm thinking we just kind of plop the whole roll in here and then we're gonna start trimming it up, trying to get it to fit around all our corners and everything. And like I said, most of it gets covered up anyways. We still want it to look nice, but the linoleum should be great. It's easy to clean, it's reliable, it's the thick stuff, and it was very reasonable. You know, the problem is if you try to use the slatted style, they expand and contract, they end up popping and bowing up. You nice thing with linoleum, you put it down, it's there, it's easy to clean, and we shouldn't have to worry about it for a super long time and it was less than $300 for every bit of it. Okay. <laughs> ah. 
how in the world are we supposed to be? I don't know. You sit that right like that. Five foot unroll. That's easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay. Yeah, we almost got it. I don't know if we almost got any of that. The problem is, is it's take, it's take what? Where am I going with it? Take it back there. I know. nail gun and of course we're using 3 8 stainless steel staples Now we're not going to staple it anywhere you're going to see all of this is going to be up underneath cabinets underneath shelves and underneath drawers A lot of stretching and trimming and pushing into place, but it actually laid out really nice. And I know at this point it might just kind of look like a big gray blob on the floor. But for me, I'm really excited because that means this is the beginning to the end. We can start reinstalling stuff now. We can go ahead and start putting in our new wiring. And then also as we start installing our fixtures, putting our seats, our benches, and everything in, I think it's going to contrast really nicely. And you're really realistically only going to see the footpath of this but well, it'll be nice because of the way we laid it out once you put everything down it'll also be under our seats now before we can go back in with all of our ceiling and everything we need to go ahead and figure out all this wiring we need to get it up in place we don't want to have to be cutting or pulling that ceiling back down once we get it in there so what we decided to do on this one is go ahead and take our main box here loose which is our breaker box and our fuses go ahead and one at a time pull the wires down and through the ceiling and just get it all out in one go we'll obviously take and mark everything with our tape here and then that's just going to be more convenient so we can really see what all we have we're not trying to chase one little wire at a time everything's out and then if we have to once we get building cabinetry in that one we can take it all loose from the back of the box we'll at least have it out of here so we can start figuring it out we do have the tarp up here and it's been completely sealed but tar tarps obviously don't last forever so we're probably going to go ahead and tar on some glue or tar on some plastic up top and i think this will just be a perfect little uh, storage container while we're working on that motorhome there's its face removed we've got i'm just joking <laughs> there's no power on <laughs> okay what in the rat's nest saying this wrong this is the chassis ground and this should be your neutral for the rest of the wiring i do believe or it's all 12 volts so yeah that should be ground i have no idea looks good to me okay <laughs>
I hope that gas alarm's not too sensitive. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go hang out with John. What you doing with my dookie tanks? You can still have it. <laughs> Yee-wee! <laughs> we'll at least get that out of Hot water guy. Crazy fancy box. Not a clue what it is or what it does, but <laughs> we pulled it out of there. Unity. We uh, need a switch box. <laughs> oh my goodness. Don't you know you're the one that's putting all this back in there? <laughs> well, all the wiring's disconnected. What an absolute wonderful thing. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> time to try to put this spaghetti in this camper. <laughs> oh my goodness.
you're probably wondering what in the world we're doing back here. That's with the FRP off the side of that camper and everything. You might remember the big, huge box that was here that had all our hosing and our wiring and all of our fuses and everything on the back side. Well, we're gonna do this one just a little bit different. And putting a fixed panel here that we can put our shore power and all of our water hook up and maybe a few other odds and ends in here and get rid of that big box. And we'll have to store it other places. We have a lot of storage solutions that we're gonna be, that we're gonna be doing. And here, I think this is gonna be nice and simple and is not gonna protrude so much into everything we have going on in the interior. It is just epic seeing all this modern stuff <laughs> shoved inside of an old motorhome. Isn't that so cool? There you have it, all of the floor woodwork done, the flooring down, at least on the rear part here, and all of the wiring installed. Now it looks like a mess. It's actually a lot better in here than it was in there. This is a lot bigger, a lot larger cavity, but it is still a lot going on. I mean, it's just spaghetti hanging everywhere. But we're days and days into this, and I'm sure some of you wanna see an update on this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and button up this video. We're really, really pushing to get this thing knocked out. We wanna have it knocked out long before next season so we can really have some fun with it, make some fun content all of next year. But we're really excited. This, is, this one is fun. It's a lot more, we're going a lot more in depth than I thought we ever would. I think it's gonna be really neat. This is gonna be a fun vehicle for our whole family to enjoy for years to come. Uh, probably set it up to take out the car, car shows where next year our plan is to go to as many car shows as possible, especially on the East Coast. But I hope you all are enjoying the process to this part. I don't know, this was a lot of just stuff, wiring and it was a lot. I hope you all enjoyed. If you have and you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to that notification bell to keep up with our future uploads on stuff like this and our other rescues and rebuilds. And if you have been a part of the channel, we appreciate it so incredibly much. Dad and I are getting to bring this thing back to life because of each and every one of you. So thank you so much. That's gonna wrap it up. Peace out and catch you all on the flip side. Mm -hmm.